everybody. If you don't know me, welcome. My name is Candace. I own WhiteRavenBoutique.com. I'm a one-woman show doing affordable, trendy women's clothing in size extra small through 3X. Like my main, main mission is size inclusivity. That's like what I'm out in the world trying to do. I put out an Instagram story a couple days ago asking if you guys had any questions you'd like for me to answer. And I got a ton of them. So I figured I would start off, you know, the official White Raven Boutique YouTube channel with a little Q&A with me. So the question I was asked probably the most was, how did you start your boutique? I started March 15th of 2018. I got my business license. I got my seller's permit. I'm in California, so you have to have those two things to become a retailer. I bought a pack of shirts, one pack, so it came in too small, too medium, too large. I think I might even still have it on the like on the website, like an expired listing. I sold them to friends and family, really anyone that would <laughs> would look at my social media. And from there, I took that money and I just put it back into more packs of clothes and more packs of clothes and more packs of clothes. And now I have over a thousand individual SKUs on the website and I'm super, super stoked to have grown this big. But my boutique didn't really take off, take off until March of this year, 2020. So when I lost my accountant job due to COVID, I was like, oh crap, like what am I gonna do? <laughs> That's my union job, those are my benefits, that's my security paycheck and my pension. One day it was just gone. So I had to take the boutique, which was really like just kind of breaking even, like paying for itself to run every month and had to turn that into a replacement income. And it took me, I'd say I was like sad and depressed and didn't really do anything. I didn't get out of bed from March 16th until February 21st, I think it was, it was a Friday, when I decided, okay, I gotta get out of bed and like do something because I have a mortgage to pay, okay? And ain't nobody helping me. I know I'm married, but like my husband and I 50-50 most everything. <laughs> so I had to get my ish together. So I got out of bed, stopped crying all the time, and I did a live show that Friday night and I sold a ton of stuff and I just kept going live. I kept doing it. I kept showing up for my customers and things just snowballed. It grew so fast in that time. And I was terrified, to be honest, to really start trying to ramp up a business in the middle of COVID, but it worked. Something about it just worked. And I just, I'm so glad that I'm now finally doing something that doesn't feel like I have like sold my soul like my job was so like life sucking before and now i'm doing something that i absolutely love and i feel that i'm really helping people in the weirdest like most insignificant seeming way possible i really truly feel like i'm helping people i'm giving people options that normally wouldn't have really cute options for clothes you know like my plus size babes or my mid-size babes or even my extra small girls that can't find things in extra small like i'm hitting that full range for my customers and i'm really really happy that i can help people that have had just struggles with purchasing clothes before. So I'm really trying to focus on making online shopping easy for people and in a full size range to where they're not like, oh, that's really cute, but it probably won't come in my size. Yeah, I got you, girl, I got you. So that's kind of a long, long, long winded answer of how I got started, but that's like the very beginning and then kind of how I kickstarted this year, just really making it a full time gig for me. All right, I got questions all over the board, like everything from business to personal, and I just wanted to share them all with you because if you know me, that's literally like my life. Like my business and personal are very much intermingled. Like I'm very much exactly who I am on social media and on the like boutiques page as much as I am on my own personal Facebook page. So 
I'm melding those things together for you guys. So another question I got is, how do you get the confidence to share your life on social media? It comes with practice. <laughs> it comes with practice, but also I've kind of always lived my life um, under like a microscope or in the public eye, if you will. I grew up as a competitive dancer. Most people that know me know that or know me from dance. Um, my family was pretty well known in the dance community and so they watched me grow up and kind of had a microscope on every single thing that I did throughout my whole life. So I got really comfortable with making decisions that weren't going to embarrass myself or embarrass my family too much and knowing that people are going to be looking at me they're going to be either looking up to me looking down on me judging me you know whether it be judging me personally or judging me professionally at a dance competition like i got really used to having eyes on me um so it doesn't bother me to share my life i probably share more than most people on social media but it's because i feel so comfortable with my following because most of them have known me since I was a little kid. So I would say if you didn't grow up in a situation like mine where you're not very comfortable like being yourself or being open on social media, just do little, little steps at a time. Like just try, just try sharing one personal thing. People love it. People love to learn about other people's lives. So just try it, try like one little thing. Even if it's one of those little like, questionnaires you know that's like 20 questions about me or whatever and you post it on you know your facebook status and just see how it goes that is my advice for you if you're not very comfortable sharing your life on social media just try it like baby steps don't just go and like dear diary your whole facebook um you know it could be pretty cathartic but it could also like scare people away if they're not used to seeing all of your inner demons so just try baby steps getting into it and um just know that you know your followers are gonna love you and if they're not your followers they're gonna unfollow you you don't have to worry about it okay the next question i got which was also really popular with my other business babes how do you stay motivated to work from home this is like the million dollar question, you guys. So it's hard. It's really hard. I'm not going to lie. Working from home and working for yourself are like the hardest things to do. Stick to a schedule, okay? Stick to it as much as you can. Mine is pretty flexible. So Tuesdays and Thursdays are my new arrival days. I know I have to be on my computer at 6.45 in the morning on those days to get things out the door ready at seven for people to shop online. So that's a non-negotiable for me. So I wake up usually around 6.40. I give myself five whole minutes to get out of bed and get to my computer. I'm like half groggy when I'm doing this. I don't know how I haven't made mistakes yet, but I stick to that schedule on Tuesdays and Thursdays. All the other days of the week, I kind of have this like window. Like I'll wake up between 6.45 and 7.30. I haven't set an alarm for myself to do that on those other days, but my body just kind of got in the habit of it from having to wake up and commute for years and years and years. My body just kind of wants to wake up that early. So if you need an alarm, set one, but try to get on a consistent schedule. You wanna go to bed at the same time every night. You wanna wake up at the same time every day. And I do this throughout the week, even the weekends. I work almost seven days a week. Sometimes I'll take like a weekend day off, but most of the time I work every single day. So just making sure that you have a schedule and that you're sticking to it is probably the best thing to motivate you to actually work. And I would say probably the biggest motivator working from home is that you have to like you don't have a choice or at least I don't have a choice like this is my only job now I could see if something was your side hustle it could get a little hard to motivate yourself but legitimately if I don't show up every single day I don't make money. I have bills. I have a mortgage. I have a truck payment. I have a $5,000 vet bill for my cat that I'm trying to pay off before the six months care credit is up. Like, 
if I don't work, I don't make money. And I think that's one of the biggest things with working for yourself and working from home is that if you don't work, you're not gonna make any money. It almost turns me into somewhat of a workaholic because I know the more I work, the more money I'll make. So I have absolutely no problems getting on my computer at 6.30 in the morning and working until 11 p.m. at night because I know that if I put in that many hours, I'm just gonna get that many more sales. Like I, I'm a little cuckoo, okay? Like I go extreme with things. I either don't work at all or I work way, way too much. I don't have the healthiest tendencies, but I'm showing up to work every day, okay? You do what you gotta do in 2020. That's just been my motto all year. Maybe 2021 things will change around, but for right now, you do what you gotta do in 2020. All right, another good question I got was, what's the hardest aspect of owning a boutique? Trying to figure out what everyone wants and having all of those things for every different person, that's really what I think is the hardest part about owning a boutique. But on the flip side of that, I love bringing people into a new style or getting people the confidence to try new things. Helping people with their confidence is probably one of my favorite things about owning a boutique. So I don't know how I turned like a negative question into a positive one, but <laughs> that leads me to the next question that I got, which was, how do you stay so positive all the time? Mindset, girl, mindset. I have been working on mindset since my early 20s. It's super important to me to have a positive mindset. I'm very, very much into like the law of attraction. If you haven't seen The Secret or read The Secret, do that because you need to. I watched the movie and read the book in my early 20s and it changed something in me. Like I, something clicked and I was like, oh, I get it. If I want good things to happen to me, I have to put good vibes out into the universe. And I started doing that and I, promise you ever since then like good things have just come my way bad things have also come my way you know let's not just go my life has been peaches and roses since my early 20s um but it has really helped me train my mind in a way to where even when like bad things happen like when when i lost my career earlier this year that was really hard to pull myself out of but i was able to turn it around and look at it like a positive because i was like oh okay so i've been saying for a long time that i want the boutique to be my full-time gig but i've had this other job and i've just you know when would have i ever been comfortable enough to quit that job to go boutique full time like was it ever gonna happen like this forced me into kind of living like living my dream i always try to see the silver lining and that's one thing like i have had to work really hard on that 10 years i've been working on trying to be a more positive person and it really has changed my life like it's made me an overall happier person you know just by actively trying to think positive all the time. So if you're having trouble with that, stop thinking about all the bad things that could go wrong all the time. Like you do have to be mindful and you have to be prepared for the worst, but you should always be telling yourself like, this is what I'm working for. This is what I want to happen. And you just have to focus on what you want to happen and it will happen. I'm telling you, it always does. When you want it, bad enough and you are putting that into the universe and you're blocking out all the negative stuff, the positive thing is going to happen for you. So if someone asked me, what is the hardest part of being married? <laughs> well, let me tell you, my husband and mine's first year of marriage was uh, pretty rough. We had a lot, a lot of personal stuff happen. Um, more than I even shared on the internet. And, um, you know, it, a pandemic started and I lost my career and <laughs> a lot of things happened all at the same time, which just so happened to be my first year of marriage. And I have always been really bad at asking for help or communicating that I need help. I feel like I'm asking for help. I feel like I'm doing that, but um, to others, i.e. my husband, um, it doesn't appear that I am asking for help. So I'm bad at communicating that I need help. 
Um, I always have been, I've always been super independent. You know, like I said earlier in the video, like we've always been 50, 50, but when all this happened and I lost my income, you know, I really struggled because I took a lot of that on my own shoulders and I internalized a lot of that as failure and start it, things started to get really, really dark for me. I thought I was asking for help, but I wasn't really communicating it. Um, so I think that communicating is definitely the hardest part of being married. Even if you think you're a good communicator or you're like, man, I talk about what's wrong all the time and I'm always vocal about the things I think. Like you can be vocal about things but not legitimately communicating them. And that's one thing that I've really learned, you know, in the last year of being married is that just spouting out things is not the same as like truly communicating and making sure that someone understands what it is that you need and if you're asking for something what it is that you're asking for so that to me has been the hardest part of being married thus far everything else is pretty legit and pretty easy though i must say okay this is kind of a random question i got but they asked if i prefer to have short hair or long hair Definitely prefer to have short hair. I just like it and it takes like five minutes to blow dry it and then I just run a flat iron like through the ends and then just leave like maybe I'll run a flat iron through my bang too just to get it to not go like wee. -hoo. But yeah, short hair, so much easier and I feel like it's easier to make it look like really good. Like it looks like crisp, like I don't know, I like it. Um, long hair, you have to put a lot of work into it to look really nice, but it looks so nice when it's done, if that makes sense. I don't know. But anyways, I love my short hair the most. Yeah, short hair for sure. Hashtag team short hair. All right, I got a ton more questions, but I'm going to cut this so that it's not too, too long. Um, so the last question I'm going to answer, what is your major goal? My goal is to eventually have a salon boutique somewhere, like an actual brick and mortar, like physical location um, that I can work at and I can do a little bit of hair on the side because I, I still love doing that. That's one of my passions is doing hair um, and makeup. It's like a whole, a total body transformation. You can come in and get your hair done, get your makeup done, get a new outfit. Doing that to yourself on the outside like really does help with the inside. Like it helps get you there if you need that little extra bit of motivation and push to like just feel good about yourself on the inside. Like just do something nice for yourself on the outside. I promise you it helps. So that's like my ultimate goal like for the boutique. And then of course like if you look at my like goal tracking sheet which I have a goal tracking sheet. I, I nerd out you guys. Okay. I'll show you this. So I have the boutique boss planner, like hashtag not sponsored. Cause I did pay for this, but in here there's like a ton of goal tracking stuff. And so I have like all my major goals on there, but one of my major goals for 2021 is to have a thousand Raven babes. So if you don't know with my boutique, I offer this program called the Raven babe program where you can sign up for it and it's free to do. You'll get like a little like link, like your own special link to the website. And you share that link with your friends. You get like a discount code. It's like an affiliate program. And if someone shops using your link or your code, I will pay you 10% of that sale. So I have a bunch of Raven babes that make like a good little like pocket cash like here and there, you know, but I really want to have it to where my Raven babes are making like livable wages. And so I really want to ramp up that program, get some tools and training in place to make sure that they know how to share things on social media to get referral sales to get a response out of the things that they're sharing. So I'm working on that to kind of get some training built into the Raven Babe program. But um, yeah, I really, that's a huge thing for me is I want people to be able to make decent money just by sharing the boutique. I also like one of my huge things that I really, really want is um, to be able to donate to charity like on a consistent basis like I I'm giving myself until March it's almost Christmas right now in case this video goes up later or earlier or whatever um 
I'm giving myself a three month goal to find someone that works in philanthropy and wants to help me connect with like a women's shelter. I have some ideas of some things that I wanna do with women's shelters. So that's a major, major goal for me as well. So much so that I'm making a priority in the first quarter of 2021. So that's not like my long-term goal. My long-term goal is to be able to donate on a regular basis and have like a working relationship and you know, something that's happening constantly. Um, but my like short-term goal is to start getting that set up and start getting some things in place to help some women that really need it. I got goals for days. I got goals for days, let me tell you. You know, I have like my end game, my end game, and then I work backwards from that. I can do this next week to get to here, and then this in two months and get to here, and this in three months and get to here. And that's, um, it's actually a really good technique for like anything you want in life. If you have your goal, like let's say, you know, like for me, 2021, I'm gonna put my goal back out there that I wanna lose 80 pounds this year. Well. Yeah, 80 pounds, that's your end goal, but like, how are you gonna do that? If I start walking more, I could drop like a pound a week just by upping up my walking. And so I've got that going and then, okay, well, let's see, I could go back on keto and lose, you know, three pounds a week. So now we're at like four pounds a week. And so how many months am I gonna do that? And let's say I go back to the gym and get myself in a calorie deficit, like then I could do this. And, you know, you just have to find your end goal and then break it down into like chunks that are easy for your like your mind to wrap around because this like huge end goal always seems unattainable until you break it down into little milestones so that's a that was a free tip that no one asked for i think that's it for today um thank you guys so much for watching make sure you give this a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button um, that way you won't miss any future videos and I will be posting a lot of like personal content and boutique content and kind of all over the place. So let me know what you guys like and what you guys would want to see. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. That way you can get in on the next round of questions that we do. And yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.